Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Intercom video, we're going to be discussing AMD Zen Micro Architecture. We actually have some updates thanks to a patch which was released on, well, Patchworks. Um, and this was an actual official patch by AMD, so it's not something fake or anything like that. And what this patch does is it actually gives us a pretty good overview, I guess you could say like a top-down level perspective of what's going to happen inside the processor. While this is really interesting, it actually backs up a lot of what we learned and what's leaked from AMD in the past and what they've unveiled in their own financial analyst conferences and all this stuff. So what we're going to do, first of all, is kind of give a refresher of what Zen is for those who are not too familiar with it. Then we're going to break down what we've learned with this. So once again, just to point out, this is not the first time that a patch has, um, has kind of spoiled you know the uh, the fanfare of a processor's release in fact excavator about two years prior to its launch amd put out a patch very much like this and it kind of gave away the inner workings of the processor from a from a top down level zen is going to be the successor to the current um fx range that amd are putting out and that of course eventually will make them make their way into apus and other um you know products which AMD are releasing. Now, what we know is there are going to be two new processors from AMD. The first is Zen, which is x86, which could go in, for example, the traditional PC or what have you. And the second is going to be its sister. It's going to be an ARM V8 core, and that's known as K12, which we're not going to talk about much in this video. And to be honest with you, we don't know too many details about anyway. Now, about three months ago, AMD actually announced that it's readying itself for a new platform, which is going to be known as AM4. Now, this AM4 platform is going to be known as Summit Ridge. Uh, that's, I'm sorry, that's what the processor uh, code name is going to be. It's going to be an entirely new socket, and it's going to feature DDR4 memory support. Now, the really important thing here is that it's going to up the core count. As many of you are aware, at the moment, for regular desktop users, we've been stuck on around four cores for some time now. I mean, goodness, even the Q6600 back in the day had four cores, and we haven't really seemed to move away from that. Yes, obviously, AMD technically have, like, for example, the 8350, which we reviewed, which technically have eight cores, but it doesn't do so for all workloads, and it's a bit of a complicated mess. But anyway, we'll get into that in more in a second. But AMD's new range of processors will support DDR4. They will support SMT, which you can think of as more Intel-like in the way it's dealing with multiple threads. It basically means hyper-threading. You could think of that one core can handle multiple threads, and it's quite it's quite a nice performance boost, to be honest with you. Continuing that very vein, AMD are very boastful. Back in the financial analyst day, which we did a full analysis of a while back, um, AMD are telling us that it's going to have 40% additional performance per clock over its predecessor, which would be Excavator. So, that's not bad, right? That That's pretty good. Furthermore, we learned that Zen Plus will improve that further still. Around 10-20% to 20 is what AMD are telling us. Whether that's genuine or not, I couldn't tell you. But they are not going to be released the Zen Pluses until 2017-18, whereas we're going to see Zen once again in 2016. There are going to be a couple of different versions of Zen, um, some of which are going to be used for APUs. For example, there's going to be one which is for 16-core Zen, which is going to have a monstrous uh, GPU along with HBM. And there's also going to be a 32 iteration of Zen as well. But that one is going to be primarily for servers. How genuine this is, I don't know. But it's looking pretty accurate given the leaks and stuff that we've already seen. So from a very basic point of view of one processor core, each core is going to have four ALUs, two AGUs, and four FPs. So FP, floating point, ALU, arithmetic logic unit, and AGU is an address logic unit as well. So what does any of that actually mean in English? Well, Intel and AMD are going to be much more similar in their approaches now, rather than AMD kind of going a completely different route, which they've done with their latest iteration of processors. Instead, they're going back to their old roots and being more Intel-like, I guess you could say, in how they're handling things. So 
there is only going to be one integer cluster in a Zen core. Now, back in, well, if you were to take a look at, say, Steamroller, there would be two integer modules. And that's why you've got those separate CPU cores slash threads per module. So once again, Zen is going to be much more traditional-like. It's going to be back like back in the day of the earlier Athlons. And to be honest with you, I think given the workloads we're seeing on typical games and typical applications now, it's probably the way to go. It's not to say that um, FX or the current FX was a bad for all applications. In some cases, it was actually quite competitive. In fact, it was very competitive. But it just meant that some applications would do really well and others not so well, particularly games didn't do so well. Now, what this further points out is that, yes, you had really good integer workouts with, say, Bulldozer, but once again, floating point performance would go down, and that was the main kick of the games, because floating point performance, floating point calculations are often what's being leveraged quite often. So what would mean, obviously, is you would just simply get lower frames, and it, you know, it just wasn't quite as, uh, as snazzy. This also means that you're going to get a single set, uh, think a single fetch, excuse me, and a single decode on the front end. This is compared to double that on Steamroller. It just makes more sense, to be totally honest. And overall, it should mean that the floating point pipes of Zen is going to be about twice as wide of that of Steamroller, which is really cool. Now, we have discussed some of the AVX stuff previously, and pretty much there's two 128 bit FMAC units on Bulldozer, and they can effectively process 128-bit SIMD, or SIMD, or however you want to pronounce it, everyone's got their own little thing, I say SIMD usually, instruction per cycle, or they can fuse together and process a 256-bit AVX, but with Zen, it can fuse together and handle up to a 512-bit AVX, which is pretty cool. It also means that Zen should theoretically if these leaks are accurate and once again i'm not saying they are but you know a lot of them now along with this patch notes and other bits and pieces for example amd's own financial analyst side it should demonstrate that for games this processor should theoretically kick butt it should really be about intel like in terms of performance and as i've said once and i'll say a billion more times even if it's not better than Intel, even if it's roughly compar comparable to a processor that's released by Intel at the same, you know, roughly the same time frame, so for example, 2016, Zen is around the same speed as Intel, give up one or two percent. I'm good with that, because then Intel and AMD are forced to compete on price. For example, let's say once again AMD are. 10% slower than Intel or 5% slower on a given workload and I'm just throwing it out there I'm not saying they will be I'm just saying potentially if there's let's say 5-10% slower but they're also 10-15% cheaper you know maybe they've got higher core count or maybe they've got something they're better at you know that that's great for us as customers it's great for us as people who actually have cash and are going to walk into that store because it means, you know, okay, I'm going to get slightly less single thread performance, but I've got more cores, or I don't have to pay as much for as many cores, or I don't have to pay as much for performance, which means more to me in this, or what have you, or maybe the platform's cheaper, or maybe they have better overclocking. Maybe, for example, you don't have to pay that extra for the, the K derivatives. Maybe it's just standard. Maybe their processors run cooler. What have you. The fact is, even if there's a good alternative, that's only great for us as customers. It means the prices are pushed down and both companies basically have to run to play catch up, which is really good news. Now, what we do know from the other leaks, the, the branch penalty of um, Bulldozer was really bad. What this basically means is, this basically means that if a processor goes the wrong way when it's predicting which way the, the a code will kind of branch. So in a simple way, let's say you have a piece of code and obviously all of this is like ifs or ors or you know various statements like that. But let's just say for the sake of argument it is if or 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 let's just actually no let's just say A or B. And the processor says 
or it predicts it's going to be, you know, route A, but in reality the code actually branches to route B, well, with current processor technology you get this massive delay, at least with AMD's current processor technology. Intel did fix a lot of this. Bear in mind that Intel have had their share of lemon, lemons as well. Anyone who bought an early Pentium 4, for example, will know that. In fact, early Pentium 4s, in a lot of workloads, are actually slower than Pentium 3s. Uh, just simply because of how long the pipeline was, and it's actually one of the reasons that Intel implemented hyperthreading. So what do I think? Well, I'm, I'm kind of happy about this. I mean, we're not really going to know until 2016 at the end of the day whether AMD are competitive, but I think it's fair to say that they need to be at this point, because if they're not, they probably will not get a chance to make another processor. I think that their future, to be totally honest, and this is not hyperbole or me hyping something up, it's probably riding on this processor, at least their CPU division, because let's face it, if it's a letdown, I think they're going to lose so much public trust, they're probably not going to survive their processor lineup to... I mean, if it's a slight letdown, you know, it'll probably be okay, but if it's a big letdown, if it's bulldozer level of letdown, it's not going to be good. So, let's hope instead that they're really competitive. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. There's been a lot of engineering talent that's been pumped into this processor, and... While some of it, yes, is not you know, amazingly important necessarily to desktop customers, like news of like a 32-bit, sorry, a 32-core, uh, you know, server module probably won't ever make its way to us as a desktop user. But that doesn't matter as long as the 8-core derivative of the processor is really powerful, puts out a lot of performance, and it does make me wonder as well if Nintendo are going to leverage this. And I know that might be a bit out of the, the left field there, but think about it. It could make sense. If Nintendo aren't launching their first, uh, their new console until next year, it is possible that we could see a an APU which possibly could potentially be using these, um, these processors or a derivative of those processors, maybe custom technology. It's too early to tell. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video found it somewhat informative. I'm going to get going, so take care and uh, have a great day. Bye for now.